So our guest has arrived. Would you would you would, would you introduce yourself? Th th this one this one's for you. That one. All right, that great. One. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sao San Kuri. Um, I have I'm an entrepreneur um, with an academic background. I'm a scientist by training. Um, and over the years, I began using design thinking quite a lot in, uh, in how I deliver even science education. Um, and that took me into opening my businesses, um, Collaborative Capacities. We are facilitators working with innovation and we use design thinking all the time in, in, in what we deliver. Um, and Vault Entrepreneurs, we power entrepreneurship in young people. And, and again, we use design thinking methodology in that. So. Um, so j just just for background, we we met at, at Bet. Well, we've met yes. met a couple of times, but we did meet at Bet in London. Yes. yes. Um, this was before all the lockdowns happened. Yes, the, the the January when all the lockdowns happened that March, and we were there um, with Vault Entrepreneurs under our previous brand. We were called Advance Youth Now. And um, we, in fact, won an award at that bed show. We uh, got listed as an aspirational, one of the aspirational trail uh, companies. And we were delighted with that. We made tons of connections and we were raring to go. And then COVID hit and it all crashed to the floor. So we took a few months to kind of breathe. <laughs> and start again um, and we decided that perhaps a rebrand was really where we needed to start so we rebranded we literally started more or less from scratch with the branding we recruited a branding company that worked with us um, again in a design thinking methodology going back to our design thinking conversation earlier on um, and and we became vault entrepreneurs uh, we, the, our program is still the same but it's all under um, a different brand a different branding now um, we are not going to go to the vet show this year uh, but we are aiming to do that in the following year because of just the way that we are caught in between um, on, we're at the moment we've got an online package and an in-person package we've just completed delivering an in-person package um, in partnership with the university set square team and funded by devon county council we've just finished that at petro college um, it was highly rewarding for everybody concerned i think i learned about as much as the students did um, in general but we were delivering the entrepreneurship and innovation academy up there um, and the, uh, th through that work, um, we began to realize that there was quite a lot of um, entities around us, a lot of organizations concerned with youth entrepreneurship. Um, and so I basically organized the Youth Entrepreneurship Ecosystem Conference, which is happening on the 14th of March, um, uh, to basically bring all these organizations that, uh, that are either uh, working in training youth in entrepreneurship skills or any of those assets for life as um, Sidmouth County uh, community uh, calls it um, it's not Sidmouth County sorry Sidmouth Community Hub calls them they call them assets for life all those transferable skills networking skills communication leadership as well as how to set up your own business it's all packaged under entrepreneurship um, so we'll, we'll, we might come might come back to that, but um, I'd, I'd like to move you on because bet bet we're so, Chris and I are going to go to bet this this year. Yeah. So we'll we'll try and find out more about what what's going on there mm -hmm. and how next year might fit with it. Brilliant. Because th this is something we'd like to stay in touch with. Fabulous. I'd love that. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Anybody, we we would pre specifically like to know about um, organisations that are offering entrepreneurship training to young people. That's the space we are in because we have found that although there's pockets uh, um, apart from Young Enterprise and and a few others, there's not there's not a great deal happening. Space, uh, the youth centres um, are doing amazing work. Young Enterprise are doing amazing work. Some of the colleges and uh, outreach communities at universities are doing incredible work. We're in that game at Vault Entrepreneurs, but in terms of you know that's I've counted them. That's it. Um, there's there's not a great deal, so we really we would love to hear more about what's going on in that space and how we can collaborate. So, design thinking, right? Uh, uh, may, maybe not just in that context, because I know you work in other contexts as well. Yeah, yeah. But I'd l I'm interested how that how that compares with, say, design science or quality ideas 
because there's, there's, there's other approaches that presumably different, different organisations are familiar with and, and would suggest. So where, where, where do you see design thinking fit? In? Can it just run alongside those other ideas or is it, is it competing with some of those ideas or how, how do you see it fit, positioned? Um, I, it's, it's not competition, that's for sure, because design thinking is a tool. So design thinking is, is a tool that you use to any problem that you have. Design thinking is a human-centered uh, problem-solving tool. So you have any problem at all, any problem at all, whether it's personal, professional, anything, um, and you can apply design thinking uh, as a process to solving that problem. Um, and so, yeah, we, we use the design thinking methodology as one of the ways in which a young entrepreneur might think about their product, might think about the clients that they um, are going to be targeting. But it's not a it's not it's not quite how you described it. It's not a competi it's not something well, I'm, separate. I'm, I'm it's just, completely I'm just, immersed. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just trying to see. So 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 somebody who's who's running a quality system, which 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 is sometimes thought of as enforcing conformity that it, mm. it, it just it just leads to a, a, a documented system that never changes right but they know that they need to innovate in some way yes um, could they just take a design thinking approach for a weekend or a week absolutely and then they come should. back and then come back to it <laughs> yes so, so, it does, so it doesn't it doesn't reject the system they've got not at all in fact if anything using design thinking on to validate a system um, is is as useful as it is to innovate around it and create better options around that system. Um, there are different ways of implementing design thinking and, and the way that we use at Collaborative Capacities is we use it in a systems-based approach. So we, for example, a client calls us in um, and they, they're they're, they're either plateaued and they want to they know that they need an innovation intervention to kind of grow their business again whether that is new products whether that is a new market or whether that is an internal change in organization structure or culture or whatever right the way we layer design thinking on this is we um, kind of assess the situation that the client is in and then we start with that human-centered approach. We decide who is going to be the target for this innovation intervention. Are we going to be looking at your, your clients, your customers, in this case your listeners, for example? Or is it the internal team who is our audience? And then we go in and really explore quite deeply who the people are that are going to be impacted by the changes that we want to start thinking about and only once we've defined who we are innovating for to with only then do we then start to kind of explore um, defining the problem and then um, generating ideas around it with the in design thinking it's called ideating um, idea generations and then we converge those ideas into what is feasible what is viable you know what we can do with uh, with the time and the let's say resources available um, and then we test it out so that's the design thinking process it starts with who um, uh, empathizing with with who and then you define the problem and then you generate ideas around solving that problem um, and then you create a prototype or a map or an idea that you want to kind of test out um, and then you move forward does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, a, it does. It's a five-step yeah, process. Yes, but when you when you're trying to define who it is that yes. you're concentrating on, yes. the 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 changes might be, let, well, let, let's say just try, just relating it to radio, to right. phonic, for example. Yeah. We we we're, we're thinking about the audience. Yeah. Whether the audience is listening to radio, whether they're listening to other other ways of finding music. Or, yeah information yes but then we've got to work back to the presenters yes and design what sort of studio what sort of resource you want that we, we have that we want yes so we part, part of the reason for inviting you here is to, to help help us formulate what we're do, doing about about those sorts of issues so so that's a it's one of those systems right so if we if we think of you 
your radio as a system, you can't exist away from your listeners. Um, you need your listeners in order to justify why you're doing this and and um, and, and and continue in either how you're doing it or slightly modify to be able to attract more listeners. So ultimately, the users of your product are your listeners. Um, now, if we start with, with, with them and empathize quite deeply with who is your audience, you begin to understand what does your audience want. Then it becomes a second, if you like, layer of a design thinking, where now you're going, okay, this is what our audience wants. What, how does that fit in with what we can do? So it's not so much about if, if you wanting your business to grow and develop and expand, it's more, it needs to be more about your audience, your market, than it is about necessarily you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> because you can't exist without them. No. And uh, you can no. you can be on your own anywhere and talking to yourself anywhere. <laughs> but as a radio station, you need to be you need to be if if you wanted to go into a design thinking process right. as a radio, yes. your end user is your listener. And then it right. becomes about what is feasible and desirable and viable for you to do. But, yes. But it's, it's that listener that needs to be in focus. Yes. Does so, that make sense? Yeah, that's, that makes, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so we've got to start thinking about this all, uh, again and then translate oh, well, it. Well, I don't know what, what you've thought of already, so I don't know if... Well, we, te we tend, I mean, we <laughs> tend to... Um, the, I mean, the situ situation is that, um, for example, mm -hmm. um, Phonic is now on DAB. Mm -hmm. um, but the the studio hasn't really been updated to reflect that. So mm -hmm. the, the studio was was uh, arranged for for FM ten mm -hmm. years ago, maybe mm -hmm. fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. Some aspects of it, and it, it, we're still working with MP3 files, which some people say aren't quality enough for DAB. But mm -hmm. that's enough. But that's the the audience don't need to know this sort of thing, do they? Really? So well, I don't what, know. What it you're depends. Saying. Well, I well it. I think it depends what sort of listener you've got. I mean, some some listeners might be completely fascinated by radio and want to know all of this. Do you consider yourselves a community radio station? We do. Right. In that case, who's your community? And and who, people who can hear us in Exeter and Devon, parts of Devon. Right. People. So so who are those people who can? Because you know, there's well, we, what five hundred. <laughs> there's nearly. There's is it is it four hundred thousand. Inhabitants in Devon, something like that, just over yes. or just under four hundred thousand yes. inhabitants in Devon. So those are your people, um, but obviously not everyone in Devon is going to listen because there's going to be an age group that is going to be doing something else, and there's going to be a different demographic that's going to be doing something else. So within within that four hundred thousand captive audience you've got in Devon, you have got a subset that is. Um, your target necessarily um, and then you think quite deeply about what they want um, if they if 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 their listening experience is going to change by you using mp4s or mp3s or mps whatever they are now I don't know anything about radio <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and I don't need to in order no, to, to no, give no, you no, the process no. but but um, if if your listeners if their listening experience is going to be impacted by how the, your technology works, then you need to think about your technology. If their listening experience is going to be more impacted by the kinds of shows you are producing, the kinds of music you're playing, the interactivity with your community that you're bringing in, then that's what you need to be doing. And maybe the technology you've got is enough. I don't know. But without thinking about your audience, you can't answer that question. No. Well. Let's just switch to Does some switch to some music. Yeah, let's take a break. <laughs> while I think about it. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so the fir the first uh, first one is, is Parsons. Yeah, you, the Alan so Parsons project. Yeah. yeah. Would, you, would you explain? You, you carry on talking while I while I, I, I go. I love I've, that song. I've, because of the design of our studio, I have to move away now towards <laughs> the computer. <laughs> but you carry on talking and then nod when when you want me to start it. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I I, I love that song. Um, so the Alan Parsons project, the song that I've picked for today is um, 
I wouldn't want to be like you. And this is this is really and truly a, a nod to innovation and creativity. Um, I'm a huge fan of Georgia O'Keeffe. She was an American artist in um, some years ago. Um, and she said, and she said many things, she's quoted for a lot of things. Her quote that is relevant to today is, I didn't come here to do what everybody else is doing. And I've taken that as one of my life mottos. I have a bunch of them, but this is one of my favorites. And this song by the Alan Parsons Project talks to innovation, talks to design thinking, talks to let's, you know, let's not do what the herd is doing. Let's think of a better way of doing this. And that's what this, that's to me, what is what that song is saying. <laughs> 